So if we take a quick look at Canvas uh, for week eight, there's the usual message to start things off. Um, obviously, we do have class today. I, I, I sent out an email saying we, we do have class. Some places don't have class. Uh, they might take today as a holiday. Uh, but we have regular class. So under the modules, we've got uh, week eight. So there's a few readings here. There is there is a resource link, and then the welcome and the conclusion, as usual, and then one assignment. Like I said, there's only going to be one assignment. There, there won't be a uh, discussion collaborative assignment this time. Uh, but there is an extra credit opportunity. There's the mid-semester survey. This is an ungraded but extra credit survey that you can take. I think it's like five or seven questions, and it's just asking for your feedback about the class so far. Uh, this class has a structure and a plan, of course, but I want to get feedback from you, the students that are actually taking the class, about maybe what's working, what's not, some feedback. It's anonymous, so you can tell me what you really think, but you know, don't hurt my feelings. So uh, you can check that out and um, get two points extra credit just for filling it out. And that is uh, two points out of a regular 10 point assignment. That's that's 20%. So free points if you do that. There's no deadline for that. Actually, you can do it like next month if you want, but you're going to forget about it. So if you do the survey, that would be appreciated. OK, so the goals of this week. Uh, we're going to do some digital imaging. We're not going to need to get back into WordPress at the moment, so you don't need to set up your MAMP and all of that. We're going to do some digital imaging. So here's some, our, uh, uh, here's some of our objectives. You're going to sketch a personal banner image, assemble a banner image via uh, for a website, and employ the use of image editing software. So this week, we're going to focus on a very quick look at using digital imaging software. So what's maybe like one famous digital imaging software that you might have heard of? Photoshop. So we're going to use a little bit of Photoshop today. Now, how many of you have ever taken or are currently taking the CIS 124 class, the digital imaging Photoshop class? So a couple of you have taken it. OK, cool. If not, um, that's fine. We're going to take a just one day lecture on a one week assignment on a quick intro to what is Photoshop, what is digital imaging. Uh, so that'll be our main lecture, because that's going to go into the end of the week assignment. So the um, activities and assignments, you should uh, do the optional survey, but it gets you extra credit, and it gives good feedback to the class. And then definitely do the web banner image assignment. So I'll explain what that is in detail. But those are our goals for the week. The um, the resources. OK, I'm going to do a lecture on Photoshop, which is one of many digital imaging software, but it's not the only one. And even though it's been around like 30 years and it's very well known and powerful, um, it's not free. You do have to get a subscription, and there's various prices. There's the regular price and the student price. Even at the student price, well, you have to keep subscribing to it. And I've been using Photoshop since like the late 90s, and I've seen it evolve and get better, better, and more expensive, unfortunately. Used to be able to buy it for one, for one cost one time, and then you have it forever. Now you kind of have to subscribe to it, kind of like Netflix or something else that you keep paying and subscribing. Well, as a student, the cool thing is that on, on campus, on our computers here, you can use your student ID to get free access to it. So definitely, if you don't have access to this at home, you want to use our lab times. You want to use the time we'll have today, and you'll want to use the labs at the end of the day, or tomorrow, or Friday, because you can use the software here in this room. I think anywhere on campus, like also at the library. All you need is your student ID. So we'll see how to, how to work with that in a moment. Well, if you want an alternative, there's also this other software, GIMP. It's the GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's open source. It's totally free. It's on Windows and it's on Mac. This has been an alternative that's been around also like uh, 10 or 15 or more years. So it's been around a while. And it's very similar to Photoshop in that it lets you 
manipulate images, work with text, do all that cool stuff that you can do in Photoshop, like put someone's face on your cat and all of that. You know, all of that can be done in digital imaging. How many, how many of you have ever heard of GIMP before? A few people. Okay, cool. How many of you have used it? A few people. Okay, so I'm going to do the lecture on Photoshop, but GIMP is an alternative, and I will include some videos and um, other reading and resources to help you with with uh, Photoshop or GIMP. Here's another one, Pixlr. This one is on the web. You don't have to download and install anything. It works on a web browser. So just a, as a quick look at that, pixlr.com, it's an online photo editor. You have either like the quick editor or like the one that's kind of like Photoshop Junior on the web. It's totally free. You just have to live with the ads that pop up once in a while. And it does require Flash, so you should probably use Google Chrome if you are going to use this. And I'll, I should put that on the notes. But it looks like, um, you know, C says, you need Flash. So if you don't have Flash, you have to do that extra download. Google Chrome usually has it built in. You might just have to click the pop-up that says Allow Flash. But um, this is also like uh, Photoshop. It's also like GIMP, but it's all online. You don't have to download the software onto your computer and take up your hard drive space. You can use it online. Part of the assignment will be something about a tagline or a slogan. The main assignment for the week, as we'll get to in a moment, is going to be about creating a graphic, a big top banner graphic for your website. When we get back into WordPress, we're going to pick a theme and design it, whatever, but we're going to have also a graphic at the top of our website that kind of explains or showcases what your website is about. And I'll give you the details of what that will be in a moment. But one thing will be that you need a tagline, some kind of slogan, like one sentence that explains. Like, let's say, in my classes, I always use the example of Victor's Bakery. Like, uh, I have a business, Victor's Bakery, and we sell cookies and cupcakes and birthday cakes, whatever. So I would need some sort of slogan in one sentence that explains what the business is about. Something simple, maybe even like, you know, San Diego Bakery. Okay, that's good enough. But as we will see on that... Uh, on that uh, link in a little bit, other taglines like a famous companies are maybe more interesting than just San Diego Bakery. So think about like the slogan, I'm loving it. What company is that? McDonald's. Um, what about the slogan, just do it? Nike. So these slogans, these taglines, this one sentence that now encapsulates the idea of a particular business that's what we aspire to do eventually that like one slogan I hear that slogan that's my business and it'll be part of your graphic that is going to be required for the end of the week assignment so you can look at that article a little bit later we'll look at it together but this is about how to craft a powerful tagline a slogan one sentence that defines your business we've got our readings so I have both um, readings for Photoshop and GIMP. So whichever one you want to use for the assignment, you have access to both of them. Photoshop definitely on campus. You can download the trial version at home if you want. Um, and there's tutorials to get you started, like an intro to Photoshop. And it's got videos and text. And we'll have a lesson together. And the same thing for GIMP. Concepts to learn, as usual, there'll be a few things to look out for in the lesson, in the reading, that is. Reading two, we need to learn some basic things, such as actually how to resize our images, crop our images, that sort of thing. Again, I've got them for both of the software here. I don't have any specific links for Pixlr, but whatever you learn in either one of those can apply to Pixlr as well. Third reading uh, is a very important concept about layers, as we will see together. One of the amazing things about Photoshop is that it is um, software where you can work with your content in layers, separate pieces. We'll see how that works when we get to it. We've got the survey. So it's six questions, two points extra credit if you want to do it. And I would appreciate if you do so I can get some feedback. It is anonymous feedback, and that will help me improve the, the rest of the semester. I want to get your feedback. OK, the assignment. This will make sense as we do the lecture, but here's what we've got. There's one assignment due on Sunday um, at midnight, and it's going to be in two parts, a digital part and a real world part. 
because with any computer software, sometimes we have the tendency to just jump into the software and start using the software without having our idea really, really figured out. So we're going to have a real world part of it in terms of you're going to sketch with real paper and pen or pencil some ideas of a possible design of a logo, uh, well, a banner. So um, on one sheet of paper, you could draw one, and that's fine. But I have here in the recommendation that what about if you divide up your paper into four quadrants, and then on each corner, you, make an, you, you sketch a little idea. And you don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be a pro at this. I'm not expecting like an amazing you know, graphic design major type of effort, but I do want to show that, I do want to see that you did a little bit more than just like a couple of boxes and um, you know, too, too simple. So that's one part of the assignment. You're going to sketch it on real paper and then either scan it, we have scanners in the room right here if you want to use it, or take a photo of it. Um, so I can see it properly, not like in a dark room. I need to see the thing. Take a photo or scan it, and it'll be uploaded to Canvas. So the, the preliminary sketch will be one of the required things, not the physical copy. I want the digital copy of what you, what you designed. Because the best ideas often happen when you plan it a little, not just jump into Photoshop and start doing stuff. Maybe a lot of us are a lot better at, I have an idea, let me write it down here. I don't like that. Let me cross it out. Let me try something else. So you'll have a, a real world version that you turn in first. In addition, then you're going to turn in a digital version of your final idea. And here's some dimensions that you'll need. And we'll see what this means once we get into Photoshop. And um, basically, you're going to write the name of your business. The tagline, there's the reminder link to go check out how to form a tagline. And then besides the text that I'm mentioning, do something else creative. We will see here in Photoshop, we can make shapes, we can draw freehand. We have a whole class set of pen tablets, real uh, digital tablets that you can plug into the computer and, and draw with like a real kind of like pencil instead of a mouse. You know, drawing digitally with a mouse is like drawing with a bar of soap. You want to use, if you want to use the natural thing that we've, or the thing that we've gotten used to, pen and paper, we have these digital pen tablets that we'll check out for you during class time or lab time, and you'll be able to draw like on, like on that kind of way that you're used to. So besides the text, do something creative. Like what, what are you going to show off when someone visits your website? What's that first top graphic that people will see? How will you catch their attention? Um, what sort of artistry will you do with it? We'll talk about exporting our image. You're going to upload the drawing and the PNG, the ping version, to Canvas to get full credit. I need to see the, the photo or the scan of your original drawing. You need to upload your banner uh, in this format. If you upload it in a different format than I'm asking for, that's not full credit. And in these dimensions, if you upload it in a different dimension, that's not full credit. Oh, more extra credit. If you print it out, your digital version, your final version, if you print out your digital version in color um, and allow us to put it up on the wall to show it off, you know, like a proud parent, um, I will also give you some more extra credit. Two points on that. This is due by Sunday the 20th, midnight. Again, the details are here. You get full credit if you do this, this, and this. You get less credit if you don't do it. And those are the and those are the points that you'll need to fulfill plus extra credit. We'll do the lecture that that gets us into a little bit of Photoshop in a moment. But does that make sense? Any questions on what you have to do for the end of the week assignment? You know, create your own web image, uh, your own banner image, and then the last uh, module. Here's the recap: what you should have done extra stuff regarding graphics. Uh, this website by Deke McClelland is really cool. He gives a lot of great tutorials on using Photoshop. He's been around like probably like 20 years doing Photoshop stuff. You get a lot of free uh, tutorials, advanced stuff actually. Next week we'll get back into WordPress 
and we'll start to talk about the concept of plugins and widgets. So that's our overview of what this week is all about. As always, if you need help with any of this, email me, ask us in the class, ask each other, and you got one required thing for Sunday and two optional things, the survey plus the extra credit printout.